you're at work, you're getting your coffee, you're not sure what actually happened in the dev notes that got put out really late last night, just go ahead and listen to me while I break down what's going on. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so really late last night, there was a, de a dev note posted. Uh, they didn't tell us this was coming, but here we are. Uh, what's really great is they're announcing a lot of new things that they told us about previously. Uh, first thing they tell us about is they told us new content was coming. Right here is they're telling us about training grounds. which uh, So they're changing Dark Zone, where uh, we'll get into that later, but you'll no longer get EXP in the Dark Zone. Now you'll get training grounds which is meant to uh, farm so you can get uh, XP as well as other uh, items such as cores and uh, gear and stuff like that is what they say here. Uh, they also tell us that you get a weekly amount of training grounds time um, instead of daily. So you can go in there anytime you want. If you have like Thursday off, you can go in Thursday, knock out all your training grounds for the week and then play to fit your schedule. Which, when we look at the rest of this dev notes, that's kind of the theme going in here, is play on your schedule. If we scroll down here, next we got a new epic invasion. So this, uh, we'll, as we go through, we'll see that there uh, is not any mention of new companions or new uh, area, no uh, Dark Domain uh, Part 2. So... Uh, those images of magic that we saw seem to be her opening story. Uh, that That's what everything's kind of going towards right now. And this epic invasion that we're talking about right here, uh, it doesn't tell us who it is. Uh, but they do tell us, introduce six classic supervillains. So a lot of people are assuming uh, that since they're six, um, they're changing how Epic Invasion point system works, and uh, they're adding bonus uh, points for people who take more damage. So Captain America can now uh, wreck the leaderboards if he's taking more damage and dealing damage. Uh, targeting system. So uh, this is kind of an interesting change, and the PvP game modes, they generally have you locked in your uh, game camera 1, and they're making it and PvP game modes such as Omega War and Alliance Omega War, things like that, it'll default to camera mode 3 so you can get more of a overarching view of what's going on. This is probably one of the coolest changes. So this is, uh, gets rid of a lot of feel bads. Uh, what the, they really explain it really well right here. So if you have a Nano 2 helmet, right? And then you uh, bring up a 6-star helmet that you want to Nano into that helmet, uh, obviously Hydra, so like whatever thing you want. So if I have a Hydra 2 hel a Hydra helmet with Nano 2, and I have another Hydra, uh, you know, 6 star helmet, but this new helmet has better rolls than the new, than the old helmet, I can put them together and it'll be a Nano 3. So if I have Nano 2, no Nano, put them together in the new Nano Fuse, it'll be a new Nano 3 with the base stats of whatever the left item was. If we look right here, left and right, it shows right here uh, a three and a two make a six. That's not, that's adding them together plus one is the easiest way to think about it because anytime you nano fuse, you have to get plus one. Uh, they also tell us in this that the uh, amount of stats you get from nano infusing is gonna be higher. Instead of uh, 1.0 or 0.4, it'll be a bigger gulf of base stats going forward. Uh, this they told us about, but this will be live on 12.15's... Uh, we don't know if it will be live on 12.15, but it will be live in that patch that you will have presets for your Omega cards and companions. They're also going to make it easy to swap out your companions, uh, easier to move them around and such. They tell us there's Dark Zone improvements, uh, but don't really tell us what they are. The biggest thing that people are latching onto is right here. Hot Time, which is that double event, 
is going away uh, because it was uh, less enjoyable, more stress, and uh, they'll be giving us uh, time slots is what they say. Uh, we like to emphasize fun and either cooperating, competing with setting a higher score than ever before. Uh, for defeating heroes. So it seems like uh, the hero, the player kill points are coming back. Uh, not anyone who's played since uh, full launch has not played with that. Anyone who played for the first uh, two weeks in soft launch played around with uh, the PvP mode uh, where you got a good amount of points when killing actual players. It looks like that's coming back. They have not said that, but uh, also, this uh, this part right here uh, could be a problem with uh, the language barrier from Korean to English. Uh, they say the non-PVP channel that was created solely for uh, the purpose of gaining hero XP will be deleted. Now, this is a little confusing because they added two PVP uh, non-PVP channels. It was one, two, three, and now it's one, two, three, four, five. Uh, so is it, they're going to get rid of two channels? Are they only going to get rid of one and make four PVP? Or are they going to get rid of all three non-PVP channels and only have the two PVP channels? We don't know, but those are the questions and things to keep in mind. Alliance Omega War improvements, uh, three things changed. Now you need at least eight players to go in instead of ten. Uh, they also, instead of five minutes to invite your people, you have ten minutes to invite your people. And they are reducing the participation fee, if you don't know, uh, when people do their donations for the day. That gives you alliance gold that you use to upgrade your defense pierce, dodge rate, things like that. And to go into Alliance Omega War, it costs those resources. It appears as though that price is going down. Uh, Spec Ops... Improvements, uh, there were there was a bonus for being number one in Spec Ops, and they're saying people weren't having fun with that because it was making people feel disheartened if they were second or third, so they're getting rid of those extra points. Uh, usability improvements right here. Um, there are some things like uh, the draw selection boxes. I'm sure you all know you have to open one at a time, or the uh, material selection 20x, you have to open up one at a time. They're not going to make it, you can open as many as you want, because they know that's an issue for some people. Uh, now we're getting into things that aren't coming this update, but uh, things they know about. Uh, they're looking to rework specialization, so it's easier to swap uh, between characters. As you all know, I swapped from Spider-Man to Widow, and that was hell. Uh, they're looking to make that a lot easier. Uh, they're looking to make PvP more rewarding. Uh, they're looking to see what happens in Omega War and Alliance Omega War. They're trying, uh, they're trying to make it so flyers still have an advantage, but, uh, grounded units can still compete, is what they're trying to do with that. Uh, companion shards, they're saying people are maxing out certain companions at 6 star. A lot of my base ones are at 5 star. And they're saying they're looking with the new training grounds because new and, uh, epic invasion content. Uh, they're looking to make ways for you to use those companion shards. The last thing I want to touch on that should have been the first thing, but uh, it w it's not being added to the game, so I wanted to talk about it later on. Uh, they say right here, as we all know, magic's coming, 1215. But they also say that right here, I'll read the sentence for you. We kindly ask for your understanding that the transmutation of magic's costumes and Omega cards and their use as transmutation materials will not be available at this time. But rest assured, we will announce in advance when the time comes will be included in the future. This means uh, that if you have Omega cards and costumes you want to swap over to Magic, or if you pull stuff on Magic that you want to swap over to other characters, you will not be able to do that. Uh, this is specifically for transmutation, so you can still use them as fodder to level stuff up but you cannot let's say you open a rise of the east helm for magic you cannot uh transmute that to dr strange and put it on dr strange i'm using random character names 
not necessarily the best uh, of either of them, but that is how this is going to work. They also tell us that it will be coming in the future, so most likely in the next, in January or February, when the next major update comes, we will be able to move things freely between Magic and other characters. Uh, this is probably to let the people who hardcore want to play Magic play Magic, and the people who are just kind of, well, I mean, I'll move stuff over and I'll play on her now to so that it's not only Magic being played at the time. But that's it for DevNote 5. Let me know in the comment section down below how you felt about it, if you think I missed anything, and if you're seeing this video, I am live on twitch.tv slash k-i-g-e-r-r -R, playing my legendary playthrough, sorry, my uh, Mass Effect playthrough of Mass Effect Legendary Edition, which is a remake of 1, 2, and 3. Come check it out. Till next time, guys.